Hi there! Today we are focusing again on the EV technology from China. iWays recently introduced a new investor, the giant battery maker CATL, and also unveiled the production version of its second electric vehicle SUV Coupe U6 with the cell to pack battery technology. What does cell to pack mean exactly? In this episode, I will answer this question and will also briefly review both iWays U5 and and U6. Stay tuned! Bakunin Live. I am Michael Bakunin and if you are new to my channel, electric vehicles have been my full-time job and passion since 2013. When I was working for Nissan in Japan, I had to travel to China very often and I was very impressed by the speed of EV market development over there. Back in 2017, Chinese OEMs were mostly focused on the local market, but in the 20s we are seeing a lot of efforts by Chinese car makers to be present overseas. In this episode, I was reviewing the 2021 Tang EV by BYD, which was specifically designed for the Norwegian market and today I will talk about iWays which already sells U5 in Germany, Netherlands, France, Belgium and Denmark and plans further expansion. iWays I think is the appropriate pronunciation, but their website link actually reads as AI dash ways, which can also give you some color to the branding chosen by the founders who left Saic Motor and Volvo to create iWays in 2017. The company raised about $1.2 billion since then and has been able to launch a commercial product U5 in the summer of 2020 in their home market, but also in Western Europe. The investment by CTL was not very substantial, it's roughly half a million of US dollars for a minority stake in the company. But more important are the R&D and product ties between the companies. Just to remind you, CTL is in top 5 battery suppliers in the world and working closely with all major EV makers including Tesla. The cell to pack technology iWays and CATL are introducing is practically the future of the EV industry. For me it's not rocket science, but the solution has very practical advantages. Traditionally battery cells would go into a module first and then a battery pack would have modules in it. As you can imagine, by removing modules CATL and iWays are increasing energy density and reducing costs at the same time. CETL is the main battery supplier for iWays in China and all overseas vehicles are planned to come with the CETL battery technology. Specifically, the recently announced U6 will have the cell to pack tech. But before we take a deep dive into U6, let me take a step back and remind you of what U5 has to offer. I'd like to do that because both EVs U5 and U6 share the same powertrain. I will cover this bit first and for the U6 I will focus mostly on styling and creative marketing strategies the iWays team has come up with. iWays has developed a motor in-house, which I believe is the way to go in the EV space, which is becoming more and more crowded every day. However, the performance of this motor is not very exceptional. 204 horsepower, 310 Nm torque and 0 to 100 acceleration in 7.5 seconds. It looks like iWays feel a bit shy about this number because they actually decided to advertise 0 to 50 acceleration on their European website. And I understand that. The number looks much more attractive that way, just 3.1 seconds. Top speed is not impressive either, just 160 km per hour. Basically, it's a family SUV and not a sports car. Battery capacity is 63 kilowatt hours, which enables 410 WLTP driving range. 
I did a quick conversion into EPA for my subscribers in the US and it's going to be roughly 230 miles, which is close to what my former Nissan Leaf with a 62 kWh battery was able to offer. An iWaze battery is liquid cooled, not bad at all for a new player in the market. The DC charging speed is 90 kW, not exceptional, but quite fair, I would say. iWaze says U5 is ready for autonomous driving, but there might be some confusion here. L2 Plus, which they are declaring, is not autonomous driving yet, but on paper matching what Tesla is offering to their customers today. When it comes to pricing, let me focus on the European segment first. You are expected to pay $47,000 for the standard version and $51,000 for the premium. It's a lot of money in Europe, but depends on who you are comparing with. The Model Y long range will cost you 63,000 euros or 76,000 US dollars in France. Now iWaze U5 starts looking a bit more attractive, but maybe it's still not enough looking at sales 550 units only in 2020. Is the introduction of U6 going to change the sales dynamics? The card iWaze is playing is design features versus technical spec. A Japanese legend, Ken Okuyama, was working on the design of this model. Okuyama-san is well known worldwide in the performance category. He actually supervised the creation of Ferrari Enzo, Porsche 911 and Maserati Quattro Porte. Not surprised at all to see that the production version is so close to the iWaze U6 Ion concept presented a year ago, which in traditional automotive world is not always the case. The lines in the rear change significantly. I guess because of that, plus the spoiler justifies the new name category SUV Coupe for U6. In addition to that, the main exterior differences include headlights, an all glass large roof and 20 inch wheels. According to iWaze, the new upper body is built of lightweight materials to minimize weight and improve technical spec. I will compare the technical spec with U5 a bit later, but now let's have a look inside. The large landscape screen in the middle looks very familiar to me as a Tesla Model Y owner. Is this becoming a new industry standard? Many drivers will appreciate the fact that iWaze left the second 7-inch screen for the driver. The instrument panel looks very crowded on U5, but personally I like the solution on U6. Overall, the interior looks very techy and modern, and I can easily visualize the target customer, young professionals. And the fact that U6 comes with an integrated scooter and the drone just makes my argument stronger. As said earlier, U5 and U6 share the same platform, therefore we shouldn't really expect any difference in terms of performance. A couple of things I was curious to see on U6 are the acceleration and driving range, hoping those could improve because of lightweight materials, but apparently no difference. I know the iWaze team has been able to reduce the drag coefficient from 0.29 to 27, but still quite a long way to model Ys, which is 0.23. In my understanding, the U6 will go on sale with the two different battery packs, 53 and 63 kilowatt hours, which will help reduce the price, but also they are working on a top spec which will have longer driving range. But my guess is they are going to achieve this by simply squeezing in more kilowatt hours, which doesn't really help making your product more competitive. Sales are promised to begin later this year and pricing yet to be seen. What do you think? High chances to succeed in Europe? Hit the like button and see you next week.